Hey everyone, welcome to Computer Science Discoveries Live. So this first week, we're going to be talking about problem solving. This is a lesson video to help us get us into the topics and get you organized for what's going on. So what is problem solving? Well, we use the term problem to refer to lots of different situations. For example, I could say I have a problem I gotta do for my homework, or I have a problem with my brother, or, ow, I have a problem with my car. And all three mean very different things. So think about what kind of problems that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's getting up in the morning, whether it's getting to school, whether it's taking care of family chores or responsibilities. Uh, there's lots of things that we're always trying to work out, right? So let's define a problem as follows. A problem is a situation that could be fixed or improved, right? We can fix it to make it not a problem or if we could just do something better. One thing we're gonna be working on this week is talking about the problem solving process. As we're learning coding, as we're getting into learning how to talk to a computer, how to lay out lines of code, learning different functions, these are all different problems. There's gonna be different challenges that we're gonna come across. Sometimes they'll be easy, and you'll figure them out quickly. Sometimes they'll be difficult. So thinking about the problem solving process and getting better at how do we handle problems is gonna be a really important tool as you're slowly learning about computer programming. So what is the problem solving process? There's four steps we can define what problem are we trying to solve? What are our constraints? And what does the success look like? These are all important things. If you don't know what you're trying to solve, you may come up with a fix that actually doesn't really fix the problem. Once we define the problem and understand what we're trying to do, then we need to do some preparation. We need to do some brainstorming, research. What are possible solutions? Has anyone else encountered this problem? Are there any pros and cons? If I use this solution, are there any negatives associated with it? And we wanna make a plan, right? You wanna put some time into preparing, thinking, so that when we do try a solution, it has a, the best possible chance of working. So we've defined the problem, we've brainstormed a solution and made a plan, now we actually try it out. Gotta try it, right? put your plan into action. That's the easy part, we gotta try something. Now, at this point, most of us, when we fail, or when something doesn't work, we think, oh, I suck, or we quit, we give up, we think this as a negative thing. However, check this out, this is a circular process, right? When we have a problem, very rarely do we solve it perfectly on our very first try. It's possible, but more often what happens is we have a solution, parts work, we kind of work, but then we kind of see, well, what actually happens? And then we go back and do some more preparation and try again, we do more preparation, try again, more preparation, try again. And we have an idea of what success looks like and then we eventually will get there. It's a circular process. So after you try, take some time to reflect. How do our results compare to our goals? Did we solve part of the problem? Were there other problems that came up? What can we learn from this? Are there things that we can do better? What new problems have we discovered? These are all important things, right? And we go on and on. Eventually we might call a success, like we met it, we may have problems that never get solved or we may need to solve them later on, uh, but this is the problem solving process. Okay, so if you're watching this video, if you're working through independently, there's a Google Doc activity where I want you to do some problem solving and go through this process. In class, what we did was we had this challenge. We had a list of people and we had to try to meet all the problem criteria. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. I'll introduce the activity to you just so you can get an idea of what's going on. All right, here's the classroom activity. Here's what we're doing, the problem solving process. Your challenge is the birthday guest problem. You have a group of 15 guests at a restaurant for a birthday. The restaurant has three tables that can each seat only five people. Below, you got some information about the people who are attending the party. These people are close friends and you want them to be put together. Aisha and Damien, I want them to be seated next to each other. Same with Nazek and Layla. They don't have to be each couple next to each other, but each couple should be paired up. Now at the same time, you have certain people that disagree. Asia gets along great with Damien and wants to be near Damien, but she does not want to be near Gennaro. So you want to keep them apart. Now you obviously notice that the letters correspond with A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way to O. And I want you to attempt to figure out where should each person fit so that everybody is together with who they want to be with, but they are far apart or as far apart as possible from people they don't want to be with. Now, use the problem solving, problem solving strategy on this. Figure out what are our constraints? What do I need to do? What's the best plan? Try it out. What does success look like? And then do some reflection because your follow-up activity to this is going to be reflecting on how you'd use the problem solving process. So you can't edit this Google Doc, but I would like you to sketch out three tables on a piece of paper, put down, work it out, kind of reproduce AB five people at each table and figure out your best solution. And then when you're done, go ahead and update, add your image of your drawing of the three tables and solution into the Google Doc. So this will be credit for attending, for watching this video. Once you submit it, I'll know that you actually participated, you did the activity, you followed along, you did the problem solving process, uh, and I'll give you credit for that. And again, to insert the image, once you have it on paper, pencil, written down, you'll go to insert, image, and you'll wanna take a camera and as soon as you do that, there you are. It's gonna get, use your webcam. You're gonna hold up your piece of paper. <whistles> snapshot your three tables and insert it right there in the Google Doc. All right, so that's the activity that we're working on. Okay, so how did you guys do? Well, to follow up, there is a problem solving reflection. I'm definitely going to look forward for your reflection process on how you did on the birthday problem. Did you get everybody perfectly? Did you mostly have success? Did you have perfect success? What worked, what didn't work? I wanna see all that stuff. That's in another assignment for this week in your problem solving reflection. Okay, so how does all of this apply to computer science? Well, when we learn coding, when we're learning the language of how to tell a computer the steps to solve some sort of problem that we have, we, we have to use the problem solving process. So for example, what are the directions to my friend's house? Someone has written the code. If you have a phone with a map application, you're able to punch in a place pin a place, put in an address, and it gives you step-by-step -step directions, right? That was a problem that someone solved by come up, coming up with a computer application. So now none of us need to really memorize directions. We all have little map things on our phone that get us from places to places. What if I have important dates and contact information to remember? What if I need to communicate with my friends and family? What if there's an emergency? What is the best price for this shirt? Can I find it on sale somewhere else? These are all problems that people decided, hey, I can solve that by making some sort of program, by making some sort of web application or a mobile phone application. And chances are a lot of you guys do this sort of stuff. You use an application to shop, to communicate, to remember things and to find directions, right? We use computer science all the time to fix things or make things more efficient, or take something 
and make it work. So for this week, you've got, obviously, I want you to turn in your birthday problem activity. I want you to do the problem-solving reflection. You have a few lessons that I want you to do at codehs.com. So hopefully you've made an account. You're going to practice doing some coding, moving Carol around, starting to build code and learning that whole language. We have a discussion question for the week. What's a problem you've solved? Again, we do problems all the time. So just think about one that pops your mind and tell me, well, how did you solve it? What was your problem solving strategy? Finally, there's a weekly quiz related to this lesson on the problem solving strategy, as well as what you learned at the codehs.com lessons. All right. Uh, I look forward to looking over your work and have a great week.